Yo, what's up guys? My name is Destiny and welcome back to another video in the series. And on this one, we're going to go ahead and start working with creating a, a function that will retrieve all the messages that we have in our database for a particular user. That's what we're going to be doing. Hopefully you guys will enjoy the video. Do make sure to drop a like, consider subscribing as it really means the world to me. And if you check out the courses in the description below, um, consider enrolling in them. They might actually help you become, you know, a better Django developer. So without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to open up my code editor and I'm going to open up the views PY and I just need to import the serializer that I created, which is the message serializer. And I also need to import the chat message model. Perfect. Now let's get down here and we need to create a new class and I'm going to call this one my inbox. Okay. And I'm going to call, say generics dot list API view. Okay, so before I go ahead and continue, I just want to tell you guys something. So this function that we're going to be writing now will be quite a complex one. And if for any reason you don't understand how or everything that we did here, then in the Facebook clone course below in the description, I actually explain this in depthly in a way that you guys would actually understand everything that is going on. So if for any reason you don't understand how this chat system works or how the function to retrieve messages works and all that, then I recommend you take that course because there is one full section dedicated to explaining how this function that we're about to write now works, all right? So yeah, before we go ahead and continue writing this function, there are a couple of things that we need to import. Um, first of all, let's just get all the way to the top down here. I'm gonna get down here, okay? And I wanna say from Django.db.models, from Django.db.models, I wanna import subquery, subquery, and I also wanna import outref, as simple as that. And um, I could also import a Q object from there, okay? So that's pretty much everything that we need. Now in here, class my inbox then the next thing that we need to do is just go ahead and define the serializer class that we're going to be using it's going to be what the message serializer as simple as that and let's go ahead and define a get query set function or method so i'm going to say define get query sets this is all we need to do and um you could get rid of this one down here Okay, so make sure that you call this get query sets. Do not call it whatever you want, all right? Because we are trying to write a, a function that's going to get a query set, you know, like a list, not just one single item. So if you're trying to get one single item from your database, then you want to um, override the get object method, all right? Just like we did over here for the to do. But since we're trying to, you know, retrieve a query set, then we want to override the get query set method. Okay, so after we've done this, the user ID would be equal to what? Self dot quags, self dot quags, and we're gonna pass in user underscore ID. So whenever you see something like this, self dot quags user ID, self dot quags to do ID, or self dot quags, I think we, we had other ones here. See user ID. That means in the URL, we're gonna have something like one two um seven dot zero dot zero dot one slash. A user ID which might be 23 or 33 or whatever all right so whenever you see quarks that is keyword argument which means that there will be a user ID in the URL parameter all right so after this now let's go ahead and define a new variable and I'm gonna call this one messages should be equal to then we're gonna say chat message dot object dot filter so this is where it starts getting complicated you guys should just follow along so I'm just gonna say I'm going to say id underscore underscore in should be equal to then i'm going to call the subquery and in the subquery you you, you want to instantiate the subquery by opening a parameter and in the end what you want to filter is user dot object dot filter and i'm going to explain all right so we filter by let me just make sure that this is indented well okay so we filter using the q object so we want to get sender underscore underscore receiver sender underscore underscore receiver should be equal to user underscore id and i think we we need another one and um, this one is going to be receiver underscore underscore sender receiver underscore underscore sender should be equal to user id 
All right, so I know it might actually be confusing from over here, but let's explain what's going on. And also the explanation, I might put this in the written word. So if you guys don't understand what's going on, you can actually, you know, just check out the, the description below and, you know, maybe check out a file or documents that I'm going to put in there to actually write down what this is doing in case I, I, I couldn't explain it perfectly well the way you understand. Okay, so chat message object filter. Now in the chat message, model there is an invisible field called id we all know about that now we want to check if the id that is being passed in there is in then we pretty much called this user over here then in this user we passed in sender underscore underscore receiver should be equal to this user id that we had over here or receiver underscore underscore sender should be equal to this user id that we have over here so what we are pretty much doing over here is using this underscore we are pretty much doing like some like a nested lookup all right so i know it might be confusing let me further explain everything that's going on okay or should we actually just write down the code then go through the code one after the other and explain everything that's going on i think that should be a more, a more better way to do it right but let me just explain what's going on first of all i'm gonna start from the beginning um to explain it again and make sure that you guys understand what's going on so we have this first line over here now this line pretty much initializes a query to fetch the chat messages using the chat model, the chat message model that we that we wrote over here. All right, this chat message model. That's what this first line does. Now this one over here, id underscore underscore in equal to subquery. This means that you want to filter the message based on their IDs, and we are using a subquery to do this. All right, and also here we now wrote this filter over here that filters user so let's start with this one this one over here um the q sender underscore underscore receiver or this one over here or this one over here that is that is what they call an all condition all right this is an all condition so we say either filter this or we use this to filter this okay so using the q objects we wrote this all conditions over here and what it pretty much does is checking if the user with this user id is either the sender or the receiver of the message. It's as simple as that, all right? So whatever user that will pass in here, whatever ID that will pass in here, it will pretty much check if the user that owns that ID is either the sender or the receiver. As simple as that, all right? And after that, we need to continue writing this. I'm gonna get just down here. You don't wanna make mistake. So just down here, then you wanna put a dot distinct, okay? And dot distinct and also annotate and in the annotates, what you want to do is go ahead and define. I'm gonna just call this. I'm gonna call this one the last message. And in here, we, we also want to write another subquery in this query. Okay. So for this one, I'm gonna open up a subquery again, and I'm gonna say chat message. Let me get back. Indent not get back. So I'm gonna say chat message dot object dot filter like this. And what do we want to filter this time around? I'm gonna say Q. I can actually copy and paste, but I don't want to do that. So I'm going to say Q should be equal to what? Then we want to go back to the previous query using the outref. And what are we going to grab from there? We're going to grab the ID. Simple as that. And then you want to put a comma over here. We want to also say receiver should be equal to user underscore ID. Now we need the all. So you could just copy this and, and paste it down if you want to do that. If you don't want to do, let's just go ahead and write this out. So we're going to say receiver again should be equal to out breath. And we also want to go ahead and grab the ID from the out rev. Don't worry, I will explain this. And over here, you put a comma. Then you say sender should be equal to what? Sender or uh, not sender, but instead user underscore ID, as simple as that. Now let's indent this and make sure that our code looks good and not, you know, rough. This one should be in here. Um, where does this one belong to? This one should be out here. Where does this one belong to? Okay, yeah, I think, I think we have a, a, an error here. So copy this and indent. Yeah, this should be indented just like that. Okay, so this will now give us a better view of how the code should be. All right, so let's explain what's going on here from this distinct. Okay, so the distinct annotates just ensures that each unique user is considered only once. All right, 
and then it prepares to annotate additional data that we're going to pass down over here this distinct over here it pretty much ensures that each unique user that we get from the query that we are writing is considered only once all right and this annotate over here pretty much you know sets up like a new pace to go ahead and, uh, and annotate new additional data all right so this this one over here last underscore message equal to subquery we're pretty much trying to find the last message that's sent between the current user and another user if you don't understand let me explain so let's say we have two people in a conversation one is destiny and the other is i don't know let's say john okay now john and destiny have you know had a lot of chats destiny says something like hi and john said um let me just go, get down here and comment and john said hello so what we're pretty much doing with the last message is find the last message that was sent between the current user and another user the current user is destiny another user is john what is the last message or let's say what is the latest message that was sent is hello right so that's what this conditional statement over here is pretty much doing okay and okay pretty much this one over here now let me explain what this other line over here is doing so the chat message object filter is pretty much saying that we want to go ahead and query the chat message model to find relevant messages for whatever chat message that we are getting okay then we wrote this one over here i know this one is kind of confusing because it doesn't look the same as this one but it's similar to what we had before okay it's pretty much similar to what we have before to so check if the current messages sender or receiver matches the current user id all right so you guys can actually you know you can do your own research read more on outref and subquery on how to work and all that but if for any reason you don't understand in depthly what's going on then i highly recommend you take the facebook clone course because i actually explained everything that went on in depthly there and trust me you guys will really enjoy the course all right so after we've done this there are there's still a couple of things that we need to do let's go ahead and and write those down and after that i think we should be done so just down here you want to order by so just because we want to get the most latest message from the user we're going to order by a minus id okay and we want to get just one of the message so we're going to see one all right and if you guys don't know what we're trying to build here that was what i demoed in the in the beginning part of the project where on the message list we have different messages that we've had with, with different user and you're gonna see the name of the user and you're gonna see a sneak peek of the last message that i had that's what we're trying to build as simple as that now i also want to pass in the value values list and i'm gonna say id and um pretty much flat should be equal to true let me explain what this is doing okay flat is equal to true the last message isn't isn't gonna have any any of this um the distinct should have an I think yeah that this thing should have a dot values lists yeah and we that's where we need to go ahead and pass in the last underscore msg that we're going to be using that later and i'm going to say flat should be equal to true and this time around we want to order this again by id okay it should be by by minus id all right so we get the, the most recent one okay and after that finally this one down here we're just gonna go ahead and say dot order by and finally minus id that's pretty much it we are done with the whole query we will not be writing anything again just apart from the fact that we need to go ahead and return the message because our function must return something okay so now let me go ahead and explain what's going on and after that we're pretty much done okay so where did we even stop um i think we stopped here right we stopped in the outer ref thing so let's start by this one that says order by id i think i explained this already where i said this is pretty much similar to this where it checks if the user that sent the message is equal to the current user or the other user okay now order by minus id dot values list flat it be true this is pretty much used to order the messages by their ids but just like i told you guys in the sending order and we want to select only the first one using this okay so this orders the message in descending order by the first one which is this okay so hopefully you guys understand understand what's going that and the latest message only that's what we are selecting that's why we did minus id over here so if you pull 
just ID, then it's going to get the very first message. Well, if you, if you put minus ID, then it's going to get the most recent message, or you can say the latest message, or you can say the last message that we have in the query. Okay, it's as simple as that. And we also have this one over here that says values list last MSG. So what I want is pretty much doing is it extracts the list of IDs of the last messages that we've gotten, which will then be used for filtering the main query. Do you understand? So it's pretty much on extract. Okay, let me explain that again. It extracts the list of the IDs of the latest message that we've gotten from over here, which will then be used to filter the main query. So the main query is this one over here. All right. This very first one, that's the main query. Now this one is going to fit out the ID of the latest message that will be used in featuring this main query over here. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. Then finally we have this and that's pretty much it orders the list of messages based on their IDs in descending order. Okay. So let's say we have messages like John and um, I don't know, let's say some other user, some other user, some other user. And this message was sent yesterday this day before yesterday this the other day before yesterday and this today now since this one was sent today it will be at the top it will be the latest followed by the the other latest followed by the latest then the oldest will be at the bottom that's pretty much what this code does we are pretty much done with the code hopefully you guys understood what went on but i know if this is your first time writing a complex query like this then definitely you should find it difficult to understand what's going on with just your first try all you need to do is just go back in the in the tutorial just take a step back sit down try you know assimilating everything that we've done and just because we actually you know for the fact that we we don't pack all those all the tutorials in one long course then i'm sure you guys will have time to actually understand everything that went on on this one before we go ahead and start working in the next one that's pretty much it open up your urls py let's go ahead and create a url now i just duplicated this one all right down here or you can write your own from scratch, it helps you what you want to do. I'm just going to get rid of this. And I'm going to call this one my message. It helps you what you want to call it. I'm just going to call it my messages. And remember, we have this over here called user ID. So we need to pass in that user ID in there. In the URLs over here, I'm going to pass in user ID just like that. And what else do we do we need? um my messages user id now let's just go ahead and call the my inbox right my inbox dot as view and that's pretty much what we need okay so right now we don't have any message model we don't have anything but if you put this in the on the url if you put this in the browser and put in the user id you should get all the messages that a user have had okay don't worry in the next three four videos we should go ahead and start working with the visual things and you guys will actually see you know real things start going on in the web browser i know that's one of the most interesting parts of the course when you actually see things working but for now we just need to get the logic done and dusted and we'll start working with the front end where you guys will see visual things all right so that's pretty much it hopefully you enjoyed the video do make sure to drop a like consider subscribing as it really means the world to me and i hope to catch you guys in the next video check out the links in the description below one of them will actually help you become a better django developer and help us grow together so yeah that's gonna be it until the next video and love peace out